was that they were called followers of the way. So there seems to be some kind of correlation there. When you, when the truth gets close to universal knowledge, it becomes a bit of a mystical experience. So it, from my opinion, and this is not a fact, I think the more closer to the truth any uh, thing gets, the more uh, mystical it gets. The more mystical, yeah, more mystical experiences you get from it too. So if the early Christians were called uh, followers of the way, and Taoists are also followers, uh, call themselves, or Taoists, call themselves, uh, their way of looking at things as the way, uh, it could be some similarities, but I'm starting to wonder, where are you making a connection here? Have you guys read The Art of War? Yeah. yeah. What did you guys no think of it? Because I've only read a brief book about, like, it's a oh. book, but it's, like, really brief compared to the other versions. One of my favorite books. I love that book. Isn't it crazy how he says that, like, um, you know, to, to siege in, in a city, it's more important to, you know, block their assets rather than just attacking the city itself? Because if you attack the fortress, your army will suffer more. You know, it's pretty interesting, that part. <laughs> he's, he's using a lot of psychology. He's, he's thinking of, like, he's using manipulation tactics and all kinds of, like, psychology. Like, he even, like, tells you not to fight, like... Uh, certain times, like yeah, the best victory is a victory that's no that doesn't require much fighting is the best victory because it costs less. Yeah, so even, I like, like that part too. You know, even if you just like, like sometimes people think, oh yeah, like we need to go fight. Like sometimes you just you can just go talk it out. Like if, if what you're trying to accomplish is something behind, like something behind the like like let's just say like I. Let's just say you have something I, I need and like I need I really need to get that from you like and like it requires me to kill you but I can also talk to you like why would I try to uh, fight you and mine end up losing my own life like you know like it's if I'm if if all I need is that thing that you have like I, I can just simply talk to you I'm like yeah you know what's another cool thing that you can that that's from the other war that that's actually like in references all over entertainment. Like I read this funny book in Skyrim, and it was called the Art of War Magic, and it literally had one of the Art of War sort of references where it's like exploit your enemy's weakness, always watch your enemy's weakness and exploit it any way you can. That's a, yeah. it's pretty cool. I think you can take that backwards and realize that your enemy can do the same. That's cool. How, that's how I take. That's how I, you should like how I, I use the art of war. Like, for yeah, I like that. I use it for spiritual warfare. Like, oh yeah. You also you also find language in the Tao Te Ching and Lao Tzu's writings that talk about the weak overcoming the strong, and um, you know the soft overcoming the hard and concepts like that. And those are ideas that you also find in Christianity. You you know, the, the Christ talks about the meek inheriting the kingdom of God, the, that violence and strength will never overcome the world. These are very advanced philosophical concepts when you look at them in their nature. And they're also religious concepts. Um, I'd say that's because anybody that can that level of philosophy in their head, they also can carry it through a long time of generations too and pass on that knowledge. So that it becomes wisdom hidden in a religious group. If you can understand it, and 
Yeah, you can, there's a lot of correlation. You can, you, yeah, you. I guess the only thing that changes is that Jesus, Jesus came as a, you know, Jesus was God and he incarnated as Jesus and paid. These days, they call it uh, fullness of the Godhead, but in the Greek uh, one, it says fullness of the deity. Oh, that's another thing. We, we, we never mentioned it. So there's logos and deity. These are two concepts from the Greek times. I've not completed the whole process of understanding what the heck they meant with deity, but it seems to be in the same universal, like, no, uh, not universal, but in the fabric of things kind of understanding. And I'm curious if you, any of you would know more about what the heck well, the deity like part is. The Bible does mention, like, little gods. So maybe... Um, huh? The, the Bible does mention, like, little gods, you know, like, with the small g, like, or, like, other gods, false gods or other gods. And, like, sometimes even though they call them false, false gods, you know, like in... I think that's usually in the Old Testament where it calls them false gods. Um, I think that they still, like, they still were some god. Like to an extent, they were real gods. They just weren't the God, the Creator. You know, the King of Kings and host of, host of, of hosts. Like he was in the these little gods that are mentioned. Like they're not the one, the Creator, everything. They're they're not who's really in charge. Like yeah, they they have some power, but they're not Yahweh. Gotcha. That's still speculation in the air until the day I see that with my own eyes. For me. Yeah, well, I have human uh, beings, human shredded beings through those. Them, I guess they worship them as gods because they, they were able to exchange some, some kind of powers, you know, like whether it was like divination so they can maybe foresee things, know things about certain people like get a you know certain knowledge that they wouldn't normally know like for various things you know because they're a lot more uh, intelligent than we are and especially now like you know you know if we like just even even right now dude if, if they could take uh i don't know like if freaking marcus could teleport back in time you know, he he probably they can they would probably consider him a god, with all the basic knowledge that he has of like today's world. You know, like just with some basic knowledge of like some science, like so. Just imagine like people like back in those days, you know, summoning these freaking demons, and asking them for like basic scientific stuff. Like that's that that would like change their freaking life. So like. Just imagining have somebody having the actual power to do a summoning. The heck kind of spiritual power did you have back in the day? Yeah, well, that's kind of why people, that's one of the reasons people do these freaking rituals. But it all comes at a cost. It does, but I think it's that spiritual power back in the day was stronger. Golly. Closer to the roots, for sure. Because this is like watered-down child's play sometimes. Still dangerous, but child's play, nonetheless. I don't... I don't know about you, but... You know, when I when I consider spiritual development, I the only thing that really matters to me is developing as a person and becoming a better person, developing my virtuous aspect of myself, you know, just becoming a better person. That's it. I, I don't want to control anything. I don't want to have vast wealth. I don't want to have anything like that. I just want to become a better person. And I want to, I want to become closer to God. That's my spirituality. And all right. Uh, that's the Christian path in general. That's what it means. It just means 
becoming closer to God. That's it. You know, I've heard that so many times. I'm starting. I started using my ears to try to uh, hear past that for us people. And in this moment, one of the few things is I hear it echo uh, from a long history of time when uh, people say uh, coming closer to God. Yeah, so I mean that kind of brings the question: Where is it? Uh, where did we come from? We, uh, context, please. We, as in, like, um, not necessarily even like your physical form, you know, but like your spirit. Where does it come from? Uh, I didn't go far, that far into uh, the whole discovery route. I'm not sure why, but I do know the spirit is split in half. You think like a human spirit, it's a split in half? It's, yes. Half here, half somewhere else. Like, well, can you can you give an example of that? Like, how do we... uh, I mean... Quantum entanglement, kind of as an example. So you mean like, like in a sense of what, like telepathy or something, like where you can just kind of like intuitive, like intuitively uh, affect somebody else in another place? Is that what you mean? Yep. Except, uh, what I'm saying is there's a little bit of truth to the imperfect, the imperfection of mankind. Hey, uh, it, how does that work, though? Like, would the spirits be already existing before the birth of the person, or would the birth of the person ultimately, like, create the new spirit that's default with, like, the with like the person? Like, the person's just spawned when they're born with, the, with their own spirit, and that means, like, they exist. Like, how does that work? That still is beyond my complete comprehension. It's within... It's like a barely an eye of a storm kind of comprehension right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would think I would think mostly like I'm just like I would think as of now, like without knowing like anything about that. But I would just think I'm guessing that um, like since one person goes in love with another person, their love creates like a mixture of like the baby that's going to exist and the baby exists and that's what you get like you know i feel like it's like the bonding of two you know two people or whatever it creates it and then it just creates the baby but that's a good one where would that energy um because you know like even in science right it says energy can't be created or destroyed that's present science. If you look at future science, it's not going to be that anymore. Mm, I mean, what do you mean, like by future science? Future science. Which, uh, the, the, so would be a theory you know how the advancements in technology of uh, understanding goes, right? Ten thousand <laughs> years of human growth. Future science will not have the same uh, comprehension level at all. I expect it to be better than what it is now, but they barely teach us anything in the first place. And I'm pretty sure that's, even it's a, though it's a great argument, it just does not seem like a complete case of truth right now. Somebody else can discover a better one. I'm hoping somebody does. What's kind of interesting is like a lot of uh, signs have been finding it like They've been also like finding it within like religions, like other world religions, like these concepts like already kind of existed. Well, I don't know about uh, the insemination of the spirit in the human body. That's for angels to find out, tell you that. If you can reach out to an angel, you'll probably find out easy enough. Now. What I do know is there's a thing in Christianity called uh, 
the Redeemer. Which people call Jesus Christ as well. But a redeemed spirit is considered a holy spirit. So it's like an evolution of something. I've been wondering if anybody can give me a oh. better idea of what that is. Because I stumbled across it and it makes oh, guys. no I just, sense. Uh, I just yes. thought of something. Um, please, please, like, yeah, like the like the thermodynamics laws is one cannot be ch ch uh, lost or gained, and the second one is that it's all open to like possibilities, random possibilities. So, like, I'm thinking like since the very beginning of Earth, supposedly, we it's said it is said that we were born from like the first life on Earth was bacteria. So eventually, what happened is that every group of bacteria. Oh, uh, so basically, we're never lost nor gained, but I think what happens is that we started not from just humans, we started from other life. Like, you know, like a whale started from like a land mammal, and then like humans started from primates, but we all have a common ancestor. But the only thing that that common ancestor does is reproduces, and it we it's the same thing as their parent. So like, we come from the same ancestor all together. But it's just that we reproduce and we adapt and we continue. But we're never lost nor gained. So but we just um, like we so just like become like we keep up, changing. Right? Now that you bring huh? that up, so earlier, you know, that's you know, I'm just, the favorite. I'm just kind of like right now, I'm just, I'm just kind of bringing it like open ended questions to try to like get some um, some thoughts like circling in. But like you know, earlier when yeah. you said you know like two people two people's like love like a you know man and woman to create this baby. And then it's like that. Can, I guess like that. Can, that can look like you know a, a spiritual birth, right? Like, like energetically, like that can. Yeah. To, to some people, that's like, they might think like yeah, that's, a, that's how the spirit is made. But um, but then if we start, but but then if we take that concept that you just came up with, right? Like, or I mean, I don't think you came up with it because like people have argued like evolution, right? So like, if we go all the way back to the to like bacteria, like. Can we can we find love within bacteria? Can we find emotions within yeah. bacteria? Like how do how do we uh like how can we like you know even right now like freaking scientists are, are you know barely like learning what emotions are. But like when you look at a a little life form which is like a small bacteria, can you really gather all that much like like you know all these emotions like because like. Then you would have to like find love within bacteria, you know. So that that would that would mean that bacteria comes together, and then some kind of like love bond or something will create more. But but then like yeah, it's what the, the, the right. Love, the love it's what I brought up earlier, man. It's the it's the concept of the good that that Plato and Socrates brought up. So. Either we live live in a, u a neutral universe where the universe doesn't care about us, or or we live in a good universe where life actually cares about us. And if that's the case, then we have to reconsider our notions. If life cares about us, then it's not neutral, you know. Yeah. Um. Oh. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, yeah, you know what I think, though? I'm thinking maybe when the bacteria first existed, they were th the bacteria was only, like, reacting. So, like, it didn't have, like, emotions or anything, but it was only, like, reacting to what's its surroundings. And eventually what happened is that, you know, in, in evolution, life adapts. So it's like, uh, it's sort of like how other animals can't think like how we do. We only think like how we do. So it's like... There's always some space to adapt, and they could adapt any way they need to. So it's like, uh, you know, maybe with that bacteria, it was only having like a chain reaction, like the first emotions ever. But it's just a bacteria. There's no religion. There's no philosophy. There's no love. So it's like all it was doing was reacting to its environment and eventually adapts to its new environment yeah. when the planet changes. So when the planet changes, then there needs to be changes to the bacteria. So they evolved into bigger 
animals. And then that's what happened, you know, with the cycle. And Do you think that there's any love involved in that, in the, in that I bacteria? Would, you I know? think it's more like for survival. Cause like you can, it, love is like, you know, it's a great emotion. So it's a luxury though, compared to survival. Cause like we could love, which is a good thing. It's a more productive thing. But like when it comes to like the early years of earth, like a lot of people couldn't even think about love. It was just all, you know, just reproduced. No, I mean, even. if you look at tigers, the the male abandons the family and then the female has to take care of the kids. Sort of like that. It's like you could have it, but um, sometimes it's a, it's a, it becomes a luxury. Or sometimes I don't know. I see. I see. I I have I have multiple cats in my house, and I see them caressing each other and licking on each other and loving each other. And caressing, um, right. You know? It's like lion pack. It's like the lions have a pack too. They love each other too. They look after each other. But I think there's some do. animals that they... don't do that. Like there's some animals that that have. I think they do love. I think it depends on the you know the break that cycle. Because, yeah, obviously, like, when they're in the wild, they're going to act in a certain way. But... An uh, innate ability to cause spiritual, like, transformation in animals. Yeah, but so, I like, you your know, emotions case... are a lot more spiritual than, uh, than people think, you know, especially, like... You were raising cats the way you do, treating them with utmost love and care, has kind of changed them from a feral creature to a... Well, from uh, domesticated yet more intelligent. It's like a there, there's you know you can change your emotions as a human being, and animals will come up to you and lay on your lap, and they'll receive that emotion. And you know, peop there, there there's people that are animal whisperers. You know, they they can speak to animals to a certain degree, and if you're a if you're not one of those people, if you are afraid around animals or whatever the case may be, then you can turn them away. But there's people out there that can change the emotions of animals. Yeah, I was just actually going to say that, bro. Like the when he mentioned tigers, right? Like the there's those uh, the Shaolin monks. Yeah. The Shaolin monks have a bunch of tigers walking around with them. and Yeah. And then the it, yeah you know, the Christian uh, the Christian Orthodox monks like they a lot of them like play around with with freaking bears in Russia. So it's a. Uh, <laughs> figure you can't take the bear out of Russia, no matter what you do. You can put the Rus Christianity into Russia, but you can't take the bear out of it. Or the Georgian monks um, playing around with wolves, like it's like. <laughs> All right, I, I had to do a good joke with that. Thanks for giving me solid Spider-Man joke material. Please continue. So, look, from what I can comprehend, uh, there are two energy forms, a body and spirit. These are your basic molecular structures. Uh, you guys been talking about the cellular structure, which is something you can look at right now, but there is no machine that can look at your energy as a uh, yeah. being itself just yet. I would love to create one or hire create uh, hire people to do it. Have you guys, have you guys ever heard of uh, Doctor Emoto? No, please go ahead. So I haven't. There's this uh, Japanese uh, doctor, right? He did this study on uh, on cursing and blessing. Uh, it was water. Oh. It was, he basically took a yes. cup of water and put pour rice on it, and then he did this experiment that's been replicated. Like you can go on YouTube and type in Doctor Emoto uh, experiment, and you see multiple people trying it, right? And they're like. They'll take a, a cup of water, they put some uh, rice on it. You know, they, they literally, they take three actually. So they take three of them, they put rice, um, like some some cooked, uh, you know, steamed white rice, right? And they like put it on on each cup. And then on, on one cup, they focus their energy and they, and they curse it. You know, they curse it, they, they speak death over it. 
on the on the middle one they don't do nothing to it and then on the uh, third one they they pray over it you know in whatever way or they speak love over it they they like focus energy of like love energy and they bless it right and then they just leave it they leave it for like a week or so and they start to notice one of them rots and the other the one that's blessed like it remains the same and the one in the middle kind of like starts to rot little by little but it doesn't like it doesn't like rot to the extent of the the one that was cursed and it, and it doesn't like remain like the one that was that was blessed you know and like there's all these uh videos on youtube where you can see people like re replicating this experiment and you can actually try yourself you know and but there's like this um it, kind of, hey. it literally points to the fact that you know emotion has a uh, is at play and then they also do some studies on like they actually analyze the water molecules and and they see how that how like it creates this like crystalline uh effect over the water that was like blessed they can kind of like they've done the same thing on like holy water and it's like they, they find the same um uh, the same thing it, it kind of looks like uh like have you ever seen it's snowflakes really beautiful. Like holy water is beautiful. Okay. I want to drink a lot of it. <laughs> no, it's good. Dude. Blessings work. That's good. They do. Yeah. Maybe that's why we. Maybe that's what the self love means. You know. All right. Uh, that would be probably it. Somebody had to coach life into uh, existence, though. So, you mentioned something similar to the, uh, what do you call the thing? When it goes round and round at the perfect uh, ratio. Round and round. I think that was, uh, you talking about like Marcus who was talking about fractals? No, there's a uh, numerical ratio of uh, 3.14, right? Oh, 3.14? I think that's pi. Five. Yes, but when you put it on a helix, that's also it a keeps... Fractals. It looks fractals like a conch. It looks like a conch. So, the way you describe your understanding of the inception of uh, create like life an intelligent life or bacteria you essentially did that you started from the center and you go went around getting into bigger concepts eventually you hit it on the concept of evolu evolution transformation things like that I, yeah, and the I, yeah, um, future is the center of your yeah. being itself yep. so when you look at life around you you find some sort of center of life and really, you can find that in the center of your being. And then you start to look around nature around you, and you can find expressions of that. That's, that's the, the conch, you know. That's the, the fractal. Yeah, and then I, I, I got into, like, uh, thermodynamics because someone else, uh, Hayoka, mentioned thermodynamics, two laws where nothing um, ever... Nothing ever loses or destroyed or gained. It's, it only changes. So, you know, I, I, was, I guess it was kind of interesting. To it bring up that only be direct. Well, well, just, you know. All right. All right. Not, uh, yeah, energy does um, that. Uh, the the whole energy concept, bro. Like you can you can find that on John one one, where it says like in the beginning was uh, logos, like as a as a like that 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 verse alone like points to so much like even like like for example like if you believe in the big bang right the big bang where did it come from like when if, if there was this big bang that exploded when it when it exploded like yeah like there was some energy but it had to, it had to have an origin and on top of that like it had to have like a, a plan because uh like it had to expand onto the laws of physics like once you get an explosion, like th this explosion of this universe began to expand onto these laws, you know, and and you just see that with the universe is it, constantly expanding, you know, and it's not it's not like you know, 
it's not super chaotic yeah there's some chaos to it but but there's like at the same time there's order to it like this order had to be there before before it exploded you know yeah so when you look at like yeah. John one one and, and, the, and the fact that it's, it calls it the logos right it used this word that means word like as a spoken word you know like that's a blast you know you can call that sound you can call that energy you know but it also like it also means divine plan and that's where you get like these laws these physical metaphysical laws and and uh you know physical laws like that that we have which is like gravity and magnetism and you, you know, could also and, consider it rationality logos means the reasoning power of your mind so when you think about logos it means, when you think about logos it just means the ordering behind the universe you're thinking about like a human perspective if you're thinking about this anything that can create a universe has to have some kind of absolute force with it Yeah, well, absolute force, okay. No, I got no problem with that. No problem with that. But to... That's all I can I can give you an understanding on that one. That's the most I've understood about the beginning of the creation. Like, I've always been curious. I've wondered if there was a place called uh, called the Creator's uh, uh, Emporium or something like that. And if I could, ever could do astral traveling, I'd probably go to places that are pre-creation. Oh yeah, like a before, before this current universe. Before universes, but yeah, sure. Oh. Uh, well, maybe. Well, I don't know. No, I don't know what would be there, though. That's a very interesting I would, origin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would look out. for things before the Bible. Uh, that's just me, though. I have never met anybody who agrees with me or differs from me, either. So, like, I would look for things if I could hold a candle to be able to discover these uh, processes. Yeah. So I want to know just like anybody else. I simply just choose a mythical pa way of doing it, not really a scientific one. With the mind itself, the mind, I'm not sh the human mind is not an absolute force. And that's what I was trying to get at. Most people, when they see reasoning, they don't see the same uh, plan that was mentioned earlier that's a universal one when you when you say that you want to examine the universe through your own mind that's that's wonderful that's exactly the christian mystical position you know that's that's the way that we observe ourselves when we observe our own minds we notice that there's something wrong with our minds and that's a you know from a christian perspective that would be a result of the fall so there was, you know, the idea, the general idea is that at one point we were in perfect communion with God. We lived with him in perfect harmony. We, you know, we didn't experience any suffering or anything like that. But then something happened and something went wrong with our minds and something went, went wrong with nature as a result and because of that now we experience suffering and now we experience all kinds of negative thought patterns and things like that so i think uh any human being if they're being honest when they observe their own mind they would notice that something is wrong we all have something wrong with our minds and when you observe that then okay, that's so. that's that's the fall and the goal is to get back to a place where 
you know, you can heal a lot of that, a lot of that uh, mental confusion. Gotcha. Uh, in that case, here's a Bible verse for you. It and uh, that it teaches you how to handle it the way Jesus did. So I've met some pastors compare Jesus as the second Adam. Since you brought up Adam himself as the, you didn't directly bring it up, but it's essentially call, connecting you back to the time where God was in communion with ma humanity, or rather mankind. I think humanity is a new word. Oh, but that was a time where God's, God spoke to man. At least in the, from the bio, biblical perspective. And yeah, our, when, our, our minds our minds were not fragmented at that point. We were speaking with God directly. Yeah. Right. And when Jesus mentions this thing, I think you'll find this like a beautiful gem. I'm looking at it as an abstract, as a person. And I've always wondered if it's like just a not uh, an homage to an old deal is like uh do not tell the left hand what the right hand i mean do not t i can't i can never figure out which hand is telling which but do not tell this hand what the other hand is doing and the problem with quote paraphrasing it that way is it's important to know which hand he said not to but tell when i thought about it, i was like ooh, that's a uh, Homage to spiritual awareness. That's and true. That's Christ a homage. Christ also to called God the people around him. him. Yeah, Christ true. also called the people around him. Oh, you perverse generations! And when you look at the word perverse in the Greek, it means turning in all directions. So it means the mind and the heart are turning in all directions. Right. Ooh. Continue, because I got something I can help add to this. I want to hear you. You know, I told you that I took the Bible literally. I wasn't looking at it as a... Because after years of being around religion, it just didn't work for me. My biggest complaint was religion wasn't working. Love was. So there's this verse that says, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who who can know it? Right? Like, it's like, who can know who can know your own mind? Like, who can know my mind? Like, only, only, uh, only the one that records it. So, like, even you can't even know your own mind because, you know, the way you, um, the, the way your mind state is right now is not the way it was two days ago. You know, it kind of like fluctuates, you know, and the way you, you are right now is not the same way when you're a little kid. You know, the more trauma you you freaking like gain, like, for example, like if somebody, you did, I just say something happened to you, like you're something traumatic, like you start carrying like shame or weight or, uh, you know, guilt. You know, all these things like start to affect you and your w ability to like perceive other people perceive yourself you know like you can even become somebody who rejects themselves or somebody who hates themselves or somebody who hates specific people like and, and it all comes from your mind like and it's all based on your own emotions like you know because the stuff you carry begin to affect your emotions like you know, if you're carrying bitterness, anxiety, hatred, like all these things come from, from a root. And it's like, it says like, who can know it? Right? Like it's desperately, the heart is desperately wicked. Like who can know it? But then like, but then like there's this verse that it says, uh, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we, we have the mind of Christ. Like that was, that was basically Paul like saying like, to some of the disciples like we have the mind of christ but the thing with paul was he was one with like he was walking in the spirit so he 
he to an extent right like he knew god so he had kind of made that way back from from that fall you know, so. and shift in my time from religion is is other people's uh spiritual belief experiences versus oh this is mine I think that's exactly something that you might be mentioning there. Yeah, and I, I guess I was very kind of trying, to, trying to like point something out because because Paul like there's this there's this one verse in Acts sixteen sixteen where there's this girl and she she had it says that she had a spear of python or you know and that's in in the Greek it says python but but in um and freaking uh what's it called in king james like it's gonna say spirit of divination you know and the spirit like around around that time in greece there was these uh oracles that used to like they were basically mediums and they, and they would uh there were these virgin mediums that were like uh, if you ever seen the movie 300 like it kind of like depicts them uh, they're i think that they were called the oracles of delphi right and there's, there's a yes, girl, yes, yeah. This girl, um, like, like Paul says that she had a spirit of Python, and she was prophesying that there were there were men from the Most High. So what what she was saying, like within Scripture points, like she was saying something accurate. But then Paul immediately kn knew what what was in her. He like discerned it because this dude had the mind of Christ. Like it's like he intuitively knew what was in her. You know, and he commanded her to come out and left her. And then they even threw him in prison after that because of the fact that he he basically, like, exercised this girl who was making people profit. You know, and they were, they were freaking pissed off after that. But, like, you know, that kind of shows you something. Like, like, it shows you that, like, he... Like through through the mind of Christ, there's there's stuff that you can know, like you can perceive things like intuitively, and then you have, you also have other spirits like who can give some information, but it's not not necessarily the same, you know. Yeah, I do at this point in time. I take it all with a grain of salt at this point. Yeah, all, uh, spirit. spirit is a servant of God. So I don't know. Christianity believes in spirits, and Buddhism believes in spirits, and pretty much any other religion believes in spirits. They they believe that there's some kind of uh, spiritual intelligence behind things in the world. Some people call them angels. Some people call them spiritual intelligences. You know whatever the case may be, the basic idea is that there's, you know, these different intelligences that are behind the operations of nature in the world and even the workings of our own minds to some degree. But human beings have the ability to overcome all that, to separate themselves from those things and develop, you know, in virtue. That's what somebody has called that, and they called it a uh, homo spiritus. A what? I, have, you know, I was looking around and digging and digging, trying to discern uh, between uh, the spirit of the spirits and the mind of Christ. I ended up finding something what they did, what you just explained that capacity to be a uh, better human and by separating themselves to be called or called homo spiritus somebody just made it up but I think it's a good way to say that there's a potential that's greater in human humanity because of this and one can only hope that people do achieve it because humans are doomed 
Homo spiritus. I like that. Yeah. yeah. That's a, I think that's along the same lines as what we're talking about. There's something special about being a human being. I mean, not to say that all of nature is not wonderful, you know, animals and plants and everything else. They're all part of the goodness, but human beings have some uh, extra ability to refine themselves mentally and spiritually beyond the rest of nature, I believe. That's what's being described in a lot of spiritual literature. And not only refine ourselves, but also destroy ourselves. Like it's like and destroy ourselves. Yeah. It's like you That's see, we could totally animals. destroy ourselves, when especially now. Animals, animals kind of just you know they go within their little cycle and don't really change. Yeah. Much for us, like we freaking, we want to change society. We want to change so much like for and we're really like people are just chasing lust like that's all they're chasing like like most most of what what uh what causes like all these big crazy changes is like people lusting after money and success and like things that don't they don't necessarily like they, they might they might look to us like like they're gonna uh help us but they really don't you know because uh when we look at, like, if you look at animals, like, animals have these basic needs. Like, as humans, we also have some of the, the same basic needs, but we've kind of, like, chased after other things. Like, we don't necessarily, we don't really need this internet. Like, I don't, in our reality, we don't need to be on Discord. We don't need to be, you know, using these computers and, um, but these comfortable lives, it's but. Too hard to telepathy for that? most people. I said it's too hard to learn to uh for most people to learn actual telepathy. Oh yeah, you know you know it's crazy. I think I think there's this uh there used to be this tribe in Australia who, who used to like who was known to still use it. Still like there are the some Aboriginal tribe in Australia, right? They were still Sign me up for that. Uh, still, Sign me up for that. Mm, <laughs> there was there was a point where they were still using it. Like at this point, like uh they've all kinda like been uh like snatched out of the outback but you know right now like what are we doing we're communicating over the internet like I don't, you're somewhere in like georgia i think right that's what he says so like it's almost like we don't need telepathy you know but could could human beings actually do it it's, there's a possibility you know like but uh at the same time like i don't think we need we need to be focused on like these uh psychic abilities you know because even like whether it's like you know trying to trying to like get a there, there might be someone in, in uh some poor country bro who who wishes they had this computer so they can experience what we're doing you know and then there's someone somewhere else who's like looking into tele telepathy you know they're spending like years of their time just trying to trying to attain th these things you know, but they forget, like, what the purpose of life is, you know, and that, and that can, like, that can fall into, like, just anything, like, even, like, you know, your job or a career or all these other things that are external that are, like, great, I guess, you know, like, we can, we, I'm not saying don't, uh, you know, don't experience life, but, like, at the end of the day, we're all, we're all gonna die, we're all, like, we, the only thing that, uh, we have like similarities in is like, you know, I was born as a baby and I'm gonna die one day and like, and uh, what was uh, what was my purpose? Like, once I've you know, like X in my body and like, and I get to like, meet, you know, come into like, um, the presence of the Creator and and meet Him and figure out like, yo, I didn't really know Him or did I know Him like? Like that's, that's there's nothing outside of yourself that can enable to be better, stronger, richer, quicker, or smarter. Everything is within. Everything exists. Seek nothing outside of yourself. Miyamoto Musashi is the closest case of what you. Hey, that's a that that book is fire, bro. Cause you know, like that's another that's, that's a great example, right? This guy, he's like 13 years old, like. 
he was like killing all these uh, samurais. You know, he wanted to be the baddest samurai. He killed all these like seventy something samurais, and then when he got, when he started getting old, and he started getting tired of like killing these people, like he he started becoming like this really really like humble person. He didn't want to fight no more. And then he realized, like, dude, like, like it was all for nothing. And then, and you know, like, that, this kind of happens to every everybody. Like, people go through these little stages in life, you know, when they're, like, when they're, like, these teenagers, like, especially in, like, freaking middle school or whatever, like, they're trying to prove something. And then as they're getting older, you know, s some of them figure out, like, yo, none of that matters. Like, I'm going to die. Like, you know, you look at, like, some old man in his 80s and like or 70s who's like getting ready to die you know he doesn't he doesn't care about like in, in his own mind he's not trying to fight you like he's not trying to fight some teenager like he's not trying to prove that he's bad or you know crazy he's not trying to get some like teenage girl like even if even if that dude like maybe his wife died already like he doesn't care about that no more like he's he's a freaking humble dude yeah, I've heard of uh, I've heard of alternatives, and I've heard of the you know the the same one you're talking about, like um, you know like rich people when they get all rich, it makes them more bored, and then they know that they're so damn wealthy that instead of normal people survival mode, they they instead try to either spend their money or make something more money. You know, um, uh, alternative is. Uh, I've heard this from Neil deGrasse Tyson. He said that um, scientists are always happy because uh, once you know the secret of the universe, you want to keep getting more secrets. And uh, and once you understand them, you I think he said that once you understand them fully, you'll be more happy and more content with the universe. Because I can, but like I've heard, I've heard alternatives of uh, I've also read about stoicism where basically. Uh, it's fun. You know, instead of uh, in instead of like being sad that you're already successful because you're already there, or being in a in a poor stance where you're you're always wanting more, it's like uh, you gotta learn how to uh, um, just analyze it. Yeah, I, I don't remember much from that part, but it, yeah, basically, there's already like there's alternatives, you know, to different perspectives yeah because i mean something something that people don't really do is like put their uh put their mind in a third perspective like you know like for example right like you can you can listen to me talk you can listen to marcus or freaking uh, moon right and you can kind of like analyze us and, and get an idea of who we are and like if we tell you something we went through like you're like oh that sounds crazy or that sounds like something that, that happened to me or whatever and you're just kind of analyzing us like from the out from you know your your point of view and like kind of like outside looking in but like you know one, one thing people a lot of people don't do is they like step out of the box and like analyze themselves and then put themselves in another person's shoes and analyze themselves from that point of view and like look look at themselves in like the third perspective like you know cuz cuz it's like at the end of the day, you, you have this this life, right? And you're like, you can be young or you can be old, like, and and when you get to the to the old age, you're you're gonna be there's you're gonna be analyzing your your life backwards. You're gonna be looking back, and uh, why not look back right now? You know, like why not do that? You know, why not live or why not live in the now? Like why why do you even need to look back? You know, like sometimes like why do I don't need to look back? Every yeah, or is it and Stoics, Stoics are good, by the way. I'm you yeah. Know, that, that's good that you're looking into Stoics because yeah, they have some degree of understanding of how to you know look within and observe their their own life. They have a method. Oh, yeah. They have a method of looking within, and that's something that you will absolutely find within all credible, you know, religious and meditative traditions, whether it's Buddhism or, or Stoicism or Platonism or, 
you know, they all talk about self-examination. Christ told his disciples to keep watch. He told them constantly to keep watch. And the word that's used in Greek to keep watch is, uh, is nepsis, which means watchfulness. And it's very important. Um, so basically the attention is, is the highest commodity in any kind of spiritual practice. The attention is, is the, the highest commodity. If you can be attentive, then you can figure out what's going on around you and within you. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's two types of old men. There's one, the ritual, powerful, knowledgeable old man that's like, I'm ready to die. And then there's the more medium class or poor old man that's like, I wish I could have done more. You know, because like once you, but yeah, um, like stoicism also, a, a thing about stoicism too is that it tries to deal with uh, random impulses. So like, for example, if you like go to work and you're under pressure and you're asked to, to deal with this task and your mind's blowing up because it's not like, you know, disciplined. So it, it does whatever it wants. That's what like stoicism deals with. So like, don't listen to your impulses. Don't listen to your mind going crazy. Try to step back from your mind. Try That's to, great. That's yeah. perfect. They, they call them, they call them external and impulses which is basically affected by your environment. And what it does is that it creates your mind into a mess. But the thing to do that Stoics do is that they stop whatever they're doing and they try to see what those impulses, what the end result of those impulses will. Because the thing about the mind is that it tricks itself. It, it tells itself, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't mop the floor. I can't, I can't do this under pressure in a college. I, this is too much for me. And it's like, if you're a Stoic, you'd say, Okay, mind, if you can't do this, then what will you do, right? Or like you will view it more constructively and you will always try to find the most objective answer that you can find when in your own mind. So it's like a philosophy well, is you, a key to life. It's you supposed said to deal you with your mind. The word. You said the right word, objective. It gives you some kind of third person perspective outside of yeah. your own mind. And the ability to look down on it and observe what's happening. That's very important. Yeah. And that that is what they call nepsis or watchfulness in the early Christian Desert Father writings. You know, they they, they did this, man. They they went out into the desert and they sat in silence and they observed their own minds. And th this is the language that they used. So the difference between the Stoics and the Christians, though, is that the Christians believe that the universe cared about them uh, and that God came down in the flesh. You know, there, there's a couple of distinct differences, but there is the same quality of observing the mind and the heart and transforming it through observation. Yeah, I, I like that stuff. I like the um, philosophy. It's really cool to know what philosophy is because um, when you're new to philosophy, you're thinking, oh, this is just idealism. But it's like, yeah, but it's also uh, like actual methods to master your mind, like master yourself and to, you know, uh, take on any hurdles related to that. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a solution, pretty much. It's like a solution to all of your, uh, you know, problems when it comes to life, pretty much, for uh, decisions. I agree. Absolutely. You got to yeah. do something, right? I mean, otherwise, you just sit there and don't figure out anything. You know, you got to do yeah, something. Yeah. So that would be like driving a car with no map, you know, or freaking no GPS. Like, mm. like that's just like try to get try to get to my city bro and just like don't look at the gps like see how far you get you know like that that's basically what that would be like you know without analyzing yourself 
Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's like that. It's like navigating because it's like, say for instance, you're the driver. It's up to you to get to the city you want to go to, and it's like your mind's telling you, "Oh no, there's so many miles, and there there might be bugs, or there might be like a car crash or something." And it's like in stoicism. Oh, this is actually this is actually an an actual like teaching they say directly in a book or whatever. So basically, when uncontrollables like when you see something that you can't control stoicism tells you hey dude like you don't need to worry about that because if it does happen well you, it's not your fault like you can't just live life you know worrying about stuff that may never happen or might happen because if it's outside of your control that's outside of your control that's like beyond you that's like telling god what to do pretty much so you can't just control that so if it's an uncontrollable then of course have preparations but also just don't don't make it you know super uh you know blockable like don't be so intimidated by it if you know that you can already you know bypass that or whatever so it's not like like yeah it's just like stuff you can't control you you shouldn't worry constantly in your mind about that sort of thing constantly because it's not your fault and so control what you can control, but if it's an uncontrollable, well, then either prepare for it or just don't obsess over it. Because either way, whether you want it or not, it might happen or it may not happen. So you gotta realize too, though, like some people, some people have kind of lost control in the, their own mind. You know. Yeah. There's a there's this verse in Proverbs that says like he that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls, like. So, you know, in Christianity, yeah. like it, 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 it's already like pointing to you to like, you know, try to like control. Like the only thing you can control is your mind. You know, if you, if you can, you know, gather yourself. But if, if there's you're... this concept of of gates, right? So uh, generally, the gates are considered the senses. So when information comes in and you, you see a similar concept in Buddhism that you have some ability to stand watch over the gates of your senses. So as you receive information through the, through the senses, you know, you can interpret it in various ways. And the idea is to stand watch at those gates and not let some, idea or concept in that's gonna wreak havoc on your own psychology yeah and the gates are like you know it's, it's crazy how like you know in um in the bible it uses these uh these terms of like gates uh towers like you know temple like it's always points to like kind of like a castle your body being a castle you know and your your soul or your spirit is like that's who's in it you know and like it even makes mention of like they call it, there's this verse where it calls a strong man you know like the strong man comes in and takes the goods which is like kind of like s sort of like symbolizing like a, a demon that that can come in and, and tempt you you know and like when you when he's talking about the gates when he's talking about the gates you know we can take for example like if you're a if you're a freaking eight-year-old kid you know and like you're just a little 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 kid, like you know, you play video games or whatever. You know, that's far as far as you've done is just play simple games, and then freaking, here comes your older cousin. He's like, hey, you want to watch some porn? You know, and like he gets you watching some porn, and, and like so now he's a, like he does. I mean, you really you've never seen it, so but you don't know that this is gonna attack your eye gates, you know, and this becomes an addiction, and this addiction like little by little begins to control you and and then it overwhelms you you know and uh to so some people it's like yo that's pretty normal but like it's not nothing is normal when people become obsessed with anything you know and this this is one example you know like this can happen in multiple other ways you know that's like one gate is your eyes you know another gate is your ears and and so on and so on like all your senses are gates
Yeah, and, and, and Christ talks, you know, he tells his disciples to stand watch at the gates. So, you know, when these things come in, when you see things on the news that disturb you or when you experience things in life that disturbs you, there's some responsibility to stand watch at the gates and not let certain things in, you know. It's... Um, yeah, like that could like you know, like I just described love. So like you know, he's kind of pointing to fear now. You know, fear can like you got people who are like you know they become these conspiracy theories theorists. You know, and they're like yeah. sharing all these conspiracy stuff, yeah. and some of them might even be true, but like ninety percent of it is not. You know, and they're just like they're digging and digging and digging and digging, and, and they become obsessed with it. And it's like what. Like, they don't know what's really, like, feeling in it, and it's, like, their own fear. Their own fear for, like, what might happen. Like, what what's going to happen? Like, oh, really? Like, that you know, they see something new pop up on YouTube, and they're, like, you know, their fear. Their fear of what might happen, like, is what causes them to click. And then they watch it. And then they, and then yeah. they feel that, that fear, and then they share it, you know? And it's, like, you know, for example, like, you know, during the whole, um... I'll give you an example, like the whole Black Lives Matter movement, like that that was an emotion that like spark. It was it was an emotional uh, thing, you know, when when that dude got uh, choked up, you know, um, people people only shared it because of their own emotions and their own emotions caused it caused people, you know, to share it, and then they watched it, and then they got mad, and then they went out and they got more mad and it just like created all this chaos you know and people even got killed like more people got killed from the from the reaction of it than uh than what what you know like it was definitely something that should have never happened but like when you look at the whole chaos that 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 happened from just fear like and anger and like this is more like uh see it if I look at it, it's more like a resolution or reflection of things that need to be dealt with over time. But when it comes to the Black Lives Matter, this is something that when I find strange in America. Uh, there are certain different fear stigmas uh, going around constantly. Oh, yeah, but, different. So that, but that whole, um, see, that thing kind of exposed two sides, like, and, it, and it's like, but it was all dealt, like, both sides were kind of, like, filled by fear, Wrong. you know? Like, some people were like, oh, man, we got to go get guns because uh, there's going to be a revolution. And then the other side is like, they're not even thinking about the revolution. They're just trying to, like, burn the police up. station, you know, because they're mad, you know? And it's like, and you got two sides. They're both filled by fear. But it's like, where where did that fear come in? Through the freaking TV. Like, you know, if you had not watched TV, you would have, like, been all right. Like, you could have you simply, like, kicked back and watched Netflix, you know, like, during that whole COVID situation. Like, people could have just, like, about, and a lot of people did, you know. A lot of people didn't really care, but a lot of people How did. Some people got arrested. I was trying to get into me wear a mask uh get and get drugs so we were we were talking about information coming in through the gates of the senses and how to stand watch over that that's vigilance vigilance yes standing watch over the gates of, of the senses that there's information coming in you know everywhere and uh some aspect some main aspect of spirituality it seems is to stand watch over the information that's coming in through those gates and we all have that um ability to to filter information that's coming in to some degree mm -hmm. and i think that's a good thing that that we have that ability yeah that's like a that's a good uh where like to filter you know because it's like for example like th those those little examples i just mentioned right like like they can they can affect people like differently like if they don't filter it like if they don't 
the like anybody can kind of like open up the same thing but some people will choose to filter it in a way where they're like yeah how is this gonna affect me like should i really go out there and riot you know or oh yeah i think i think this is gonna cause a riot like should right. i get involved like no nah, like what like so, you know you can you can look at the you can look you can look at things as they come in at you and you and you can like analyze them like yo this is gonna create this causes emotions to flare up like do i really want to like give it my my energy like no like you know like if once you realize like how things affect you like mentally and emotionally like you're able to just filter things out like quicker than just like you know, letting them just, like, hit you and actually, like, pull you and you become involved and then, like, you're, at that point, you're kind of, like, manipulated and possessed by whatever this thing came came in, like, not, not, not to that extent of, like, being possessed, but you're definitely, like, manipulated. Well, uh, let's go for this since you hit a very rare uh, subject. When it comes to the mind and the perception of the mind. And one thing about humanity, it seems, from a higher standpoint, or a higher than the human mind standpoint, the filter of the human mind is pretty small. It's very narrow. Despite its potential to broaden and see uh, large perspectives. And try to get a peek of things at like the logos or a concept of deity, which I honestly think is not exactly not like the pantheons, but capital D I E T Y. Back then they used it. So the human mind is actually an existence that's filtered to a very small self-serving uh, autonomous system which is interesting enough to say this is how we look at things as individuals whereas other species they seem to not have an exact same filter over their thoughts their uh, actions and uh, core essences they just share the whole commonality very much often, much more often than that. Their humans can develop personalities because of this, though, because after so many environmental factors uh, coming through to the gates, whether it is trauma, or positive reinforcement, excesses, greed, wants, or uh, such, these filters tend to define you as a better as a person though you don't have to you can always detach yourself like a good like a good stoic but when that filter is removed you're I, i've tell i'm telling you straight up it's like breaking that veil uh to Seeing the stars themselves within the your mind. You know, um, people are like, I think it's good to see someone that is hard to convince, like someone who's as stubborn as a mule when it comes to like information. Some people, like I, I'm pretty sure we've all met like people who are hard to convince because they're very skeptical. Like they'd rather have like you'd either pay them or. You show them the truth or you lose. So it's like everyone has like a follower mentality. Like some people, when they get into conspiracy theories, they'll they'll literally fall into it. And then that's their whole world because they don't know anything else. So like I feel like people who are more uh, like adept in like everything they do. Like if you try to convince someone who's already pretty intimidating someone who's already has a profession or something he's not going to take it so easily as a say someone who doesn't really care about that stuff so like i feel like a lot of americans especially americans are like follower mentality yeah cuz um just look at it uh 
I mean, over two thirds of Americans are actually overweight, um, which is unfortunate. But it's like, think about it. People want to eat, but what they don't stop to think about is that they're already full. They already have enough food in them that they don't need to eat anymore for a while. Um, but they're stuck in that mentality where they can't see any other way out. It's like someone who has never read up on metabolism or basic science. So they're constantly in this battle with themselves. Like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Well, if you were to have a professional tell you and try to teach you it and you were willing to listen, then you would change your whole perspective. You'd be like, oh my God. I don't have to eat. I'll survive for 10 days without eating and I'll be perfectly fine because I have the calories in me already. So like, it's just information. But like, th when people are trying to figure out like, for example, you go to a math test exam, you have to figure out every, every, every question, you have to get it right. But uh, when you don't know that stuff, you're basically constantly in a battle with yourself. Like, oh my God, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I think that's what it is, is that, you know, they don't have a basic understanding, even though they could get it because there's the internet, there's libraries, there's a poor school. So, yeah. Yeah, I think people are programmed by their surroundings. Sometimes they're a little too programmed, which is like, yeah, and they and they don't have any like they don't have any like uh, cause like they they don't have any like real like knowledge in their life already. Like if you were to tell someone, "Hey, man, if you meditate, it's gonna improve your memory by far," they would think, "Oh, what do you mean?" Right? Like when people say, "What do you mean? What do you mean?" It's like, dude, you know what I mean. But the, the truth is, they don't because they've never been hit by that way. They never actually realized that thing. And they never actually seen it for themselves being tested and proven like other people have. So it's that thing. It's like intimidating. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we're like bombarded by knowledge, you know, like there's just so much in it. There's so much stuff we see on the internet. Like, um, I guarantee you like, like even uh, like everybody, right? Like we we see the answer to all our solutions all the time. Like you know, even even like on the internet, on TV, on you know, people telling us there's so much information. Like there's a lot of times where we where we know, like we're looking for an answer and the answer is in our face, but we just don't have the wisdom to apply it. Like we there's all this freaking knowledge and all this data, and unfortunately, like that's just how like some people are some people just don't apply like their wisdom you know, yeah like, and it's like, like knowledge, there's so much knowledge in the world like if you if you were to meet someone from like an actual herbalist and you were to ask you were to ask them like oh well give me a breakdown of your uh, of your studies of your whatever work your profession and they would show you and you'd be like oh my god this is a whole nother world than what I'm used to. Like, there's so much information. If so you like, if you drive if you drive a car, then you have both knowledge and wisdom of driving a car because you've been in and out of traffic. You've had to avoid all the pitfalls, and so you have wisdom in driving. It's it's very simple. Uh, knowledge is you know. If if you're defining it this way, then it's book knowledge. But if you got wisdom, then it's simple experiential knowledge. That's it. If you know how to do a push up, then you know how to do a push up. That's then you got wisdom for doing a push up. If you've only read about doing a push up, then well, you probably don't have knowledge of it or wisdom, whatever the case. However, you're defining it. I got an example. Uh, so, like, say, for instance, someone wants to lose weight and they don't know who to turn to. So they turn to what they th they believe, what they feel like is a good source because they don't know. So, like, imagine they turn to V-Shreds, which is basically like a scammer influencer. And he tells them this lie. 
And then they're like, oh, my God, that sounds great. I think it's going to work. And it's like it doesn't when you actually put it to the test, when you actually meet like an actual nutritionist yeah. or an, act, an actual like doctor in that degree who actually knows how to knows the basic mechanisms versus this person who's just following this influencer. It's like once you know that basic mechanism knowledge and shit, it's not like, you know, you're like once you know that stuff, but a lot of people just don't. They don't pay attention. They don't know that stuff. So, like, they'll see something and then they'll follow it. And then if someone tries to tell them something, they'll probably ignore them, which they have every right to do. But it's, uh, like, like you know, there's just so much information. The only way to do it is to, well, there is no only, only way to do it. People could trick you anytime they want to, especially about information that, um, so it's basically, it's just, yeah, keep, stay wise. But, you know, the question is, how do you do that? What so is the first step to being wise? Wisdom. The, the, the way to do that is to just seek out the people that you consider credible, you know. Um, yeah. try, to, try to find people that are credible in, the, in whatever field of knowledge that you're trying to go into. And that's it. Just look. try to learn from people that are more wise than you. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't actually like listen, listen, like they don't, they don't want to actually listen to the information because it's like, uh, you know, we, I think we, a lot of us have done this where it's like, we go to school, like public school or whatever grade school, whatever. If you're not a good student, then you're like, like this, like basically we go to school and, uh, we'd be in a, I don't know, a science class, and we'd only, like, ingest, like, half the information. The rest of the awesome information that you would want to ingest is basically gone because, uh, you know, you, ch you, you chose to, uh, like, the student chose to just not adhere to that and listen to it every word for word because they just felt like it wasn't relatable or it wasn't something that they needed, when, in fact... It's something that they extremely needed. So it's like, you know, when you start your awakening, it's a very good thing once you're awakened because once you're awakened, you can learn anything and everything from the professionals and from the elders like you're supposed to. But some people, they're just not woke yet. They're not, like, awakened like that, you know? And that's really a pity. It's, it's unfortunate that people are just not, like, awakened to actually receive real information that's gonna that's been proven, you know? I wish everyone was like that, though. Why you, why you, I wish everyone could just, like, at birth, learn everything that they encounter. Because, like, if they did, uh, then... Why do you think they're not awakened, though? Like, what do you think stops them from that? Um, I think I think it's because, like, at some degree, you could be awakened. But, like, the, the difficulty is probably the reason why they're not awakened. It's like, imagine it. You go everywhere and anywhere in the world if you're awakened... To that extent, like you're going to learn almost everything you need to learn. But then versus someone who's, you know, like they're 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 just being told what to do. Like they they, they don't actually have like a like a purpose in their life. Like they don't they don't they don't want to they don't know what to do. So they just go th to class, you know. They go to class and and it just goes from one ear to out the other. You know. It's, it's just uh, it's probably because of how they're raised, or maybe they're they're just not getting it instantly. But I think it's because of uh, maybe of how people are raised. Mostly, if that's a factor, it's a contributor. I think you're hitting on the heart of spirituality itself right now. Yeah. Really. Uh, spirituality is is kind of a meta learning experience it's it's more about learning how to learn it's, it's being able to abstract all the information that's coming into your life and put it into some kind of metal meta level of learning that's that's spirituality and yeah, that's uh there's this quote by uh san paisos but he says he says, someone who thinks he knows everything doesn't know anything at all. Ignorance is the cause of arrogance. So it's like, 
you know, sometimes people are just, when you think you know stuff, like, that's, that's when you, like, you basically became that person that, like, everything goes in one ear and out the other, like, you're just, you're stopping yourself from learning, and you're... Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's meta-learning, is being willfully ignorant, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you it's know, a, um, it's a paradox. It's, yeah, like you have to be like you have to be open, but you have to 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 be able to discern it. Like, like for example, if someone tells you some random science fact that they think they know, which it's actually tested, and you find out that they're wrong, it's like now you have and you and now you have the dibs to call them wrong. So like, it's um um it's being able to know no for sure. That's what the that's what the um method used scientific method used to to, dis, to discern these things so you can know for sure whether it's going to work or if it's just some coincidence um so yeah it's <laughs> people who think they know everything they're they're they don't know anything <laughs> or they may they might know something but they're just yeah, they're that mindset they've, is they've toxic shut down you know? their own freaking ears and their own eyes and yeah and they're going based on their own I think they're. I think those people are like really egotistical. Like they're they're super like ego. No. Yeah. It's really unfortunate. Yeah, it is. It's more unfortunate. You... My teacher, back in the day, there's. So I'm loving this because this is very a, an issue I've already had experience going through. So, if you can bear with me, I'll just do a speed run. In a situation where people are either willfully ignorant or severely unfortunate, where such as obesity, not knowing how to take care of themselves, or in situations like Black Lives Matter, where fear and conspiracies or greed, you should, as a spiritual person, have the compassion to understand that what the other person is causing their own suffering. And when you do that, you'll be patient enough to handle that suffering with love. And when you deal with something with love, you're also bringing in a higher type of order into place. You're reversing the effects of causality. You're changing a historical phenomenon to something that used to be negative in that person's life by using what you speed uh, learn quickly by helping them whether if you've got wisdom and experience in dietary like you guys have just great insight i can and where i can call for example where i can accurately hit a bullseye in almost in the dark that's my uh, piece of wisdom when i say bullseye i know there's a fact something that can be credible and when you look at it it's fine but by bringing these things together and showing somebody you're changing and reversing the process of creation from negative or old uh, paradigms that's the deal with fixing or repairing uh, a broken lens, broken pair of glasses for humanity. When you're growing as a good spiritual person. That's something I loved about it. It took hours to go through that debate and it was harsh. Because <laughs> my teacher is really good at it. This sort of uh, this course so I'm bringing this up just to make sure that I think before I was too gentle with dealing with these kinds of things where dealing with truths but you know that gentleness was not exactly the best for mankind or humans in the first place people are stubborn they are willfully going the wrong direction quite often and it's like 
dude, that's going to kill you. That's going to cause a nuclear blowout. Please don't do that. Don't touch that. That's going to cause a black hole. Don't do that. That's going to cause a religious failure. Oh, my God. So all these kinds of disasters can happen because of just going the wrong direction and their growth. But at the end of the day, you have to look at each other and say, uh, these bodies are sort of like primates. They're not going to hold the essence of knowledge completely correctly. They'll do... They're like second-hand <laughs> filters to uh, reality. These five senses. And I'm loving the fact that you brought all this up as a fact of discernment at the gates. Because once those five filters here on Earth, I think, personally, at this point, are cleared up, you can he hear the five senses on of the spirit that way easier and it's something i've been working on or trying to figure out myself i've always wanted sight i did not personally want to go around listening to tons of youtube videos that somebody else threw at me it's like dude please i've had enough i appreciate your kindness i accept the emotional aspect of it but there's also a doorways like I where at some point I know that everyone's got their purpose and this one's not mine please I guess it's a combination of per personal and metapersonal where anyone can experience these sorts of um, thoughts, I suppose. And it just happened to be me sharing in the moment. But when it comes to understanding the human condition, it's not a very hard topic, I'd say. Humans are very conditioned, easily conditioned, to receive only certain favorable bits of information. And that can be taken advantage of. And that's something I'm going to say as a fair warning, that if you meet somebody in these conditions, have the com compassion to decondition them from that a pattern, from that trauma. Show them the necessary tasks like if they're adult grown men still not living a spiritual life um that's still a problem but yeah i love the fact that you guys brought up the deep learning hell yeah that was the first thing i had to figure out <coughs> how to do yeah that. you're you're right uh and we all have to give ourselves some some grace in all of this we're all going through this journey together as humans and we all make mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to give ourselves some grace. Um, the, we, we have these passions that rise up within us and they lead us astray and they make us do bad things. They make us think bad things. They make us interpret things around us with a confused mind, you know, um, that's the basic idea of the fact that we have a fractured mind. So that fact is not unknown to Christians. You know, we know that human beings are essentially broken in some way, but we also know that we're divine in some way. So um, all of those things are true. As, as an individual human being and, you know, as our personal responsibility, it's our job to look within and try to figure things out in that way. We can't do it ourselves, but we rely on God to do it for us uh, in some way. But, you know, 
we have some responsibility as well. We have to keep watch over our own thoughts and our our own emotions and things like that. But we're always going to make mistakes, and that's inevitable. So we have to give ourselves grace and other people grace around us. And what if these mistakes aren't actually uh, mistakes, but merely imitations of greatness? What do you mean? That's one thing. What do you mean by it? So imitation. our greatest desire is achieve our, the pinnacle of our uh, actions and the successes thereof. But anything that fails to achieve this is not called a mistake. It's like the word mistake comes from uh, the movies. Every time you do a film or a reel, it's called a take. And when you have to go back and repeat it, until you get the proper amount, uh, like recorded the right actions you could think of it as the word hamartano which is the jewish word the hebrew word for sin which simply means missing the mark so a mistake is a hamartano or a sin which means we're missing the mark of what we're aiming at mm -hmm. that's the meaning of the word so humanity's real potential if they never made a mistake is they would constantly always achieve greatness and everything they do well, yeah we feel that's that's the that's the the result of the fall human beings would have got everything right you know it's very possible that if we were in the garden that if we wouldn't have chosen to turn away from god then we would have become quite amazing. You know, we would have not been subject to sin and death and all kinds of mental confusion and war and famine and suffering and everything else that we experience in our lives. We could have gone that route, but we didn't. We missed the mark. And that's the concept of the fall. If you look around you and you think, you know, something is wrong here, that's the fall. And honestly, I think you're still working on the Christian mind itself when you're working with that. Um, I wish you luck, I mean, luck and success in refining it into from this or the, the kind of disordered it still is the mindset of things to a more tranquil and serene viewpoint of things are as they should be if you allow it yeah I think the definition of success too long can like change based on the person like mm -hmm. Some people are just really a, a different vision of it. Yeah, I changed the generation on purpose, though. From we and we make mistakes, but to more like it's imitation until we succeed. When when you look when you look at your own mind, do you think everything is okay or something is wrong? I mean, be honest with me. I think I'm programmed or being conditioned to be in leave that what I'm doing it fails to actually meet uh, divine order. But the real truth is if you have serenity you will find the right path regardless. That's I mean, the real truth is, as long as I have serenity, I will find the highest good. I mean, I that agree with you. I just don't. I don't. I don't think that that we're at that level yet. You know, I mean, we're not. 
Somebody's got to be that level to kind of be a forerunner. In that case, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. Yeah, and so when you're not, when you're not, when you're not uh, in a, when you, when your personal desires or your inclinations are not in accordance with your highest nature, then there's some sort of conflict within you. And what I'm saying is that 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 conflict within you is evidence of the fact that something is wrong. Something is wrong. And Chris, gotcha. I'm still very wary of the Luciferian effect. To this day, I'm like, can you define that? Like, what do you mean by that? The Luciferian effect. Basically, like the condition of sin. I call it the Luciferian effect. It just means. Essentially, when you're looking at something, that you can find some per part of you that fails to meet the mark and must be restructured and must repent. Yeah. I'm like, to some degree, that's like a baby step in spirituality. No offense. It is actually a very necessary step. To realizing that even beyond that, there's a higher order too. See within your own mind and all, and to be able to construct a better reality afterwards. Once, if you do find something wrong and you want to fix it, you got to understand you that just having the logic of understanding what is wrong and right in the first place. Or uh, g not as good as it should be is still a very uh, it's above a human comprehension. I'd say it's pretty great uh, step in tapping into a potential of fixing a lot of human problems. For me, I just know that between trying to govern my humanity at this stage in my life, which is that section of where part of me sees reality as it, as it is and in, in the, in the way it is for me, and the other part is living in the right order as best as possible within be uh, within the natural order of I am part of the kings and queens of earth that is a little bit of a boast but I'm only saying this because everyone should not just me think of it themselves as kings and queens but at the same time humble with each other just because you're a king and queen doesn't mean you now uh, and that means just that you can walk about the earth anywhere you want to go. And if you can leave the planet, good for you. But everyone else is also a king and queen. They have the same right to move about. And this is where it's part of, of a, a bit of a far stretch, I'm telling you. Where if you were to ever wonder... What was lost um, from the past of what Adam had, I suppose, with God is a trust uh, of the supremacy of and comprehension of things. 